Hello, one and all. This is Captain Luckless back from shore leave. Back to the sunless skies. Um, I just decided to take a little bit of a break because I was going pretty hard on this game and I don't want to burn out on it. And it seems like it's going to be a long one and I'm in for the long run. So that's why I decided to take a bit of a break, but uh, we're back to it. And uh, I'll try to, well, I'm still trying to do uh, daily vids, but we'll we'll see, we'll see. I don't, I don't want, like I said, I don't want to overdo it. Um, the one thing that was pointed out to me last time is that uh, since we completed the Inconceivable Circus, we have a moment's memory. I didn't even notice it at the end of the last uh, the last video. Pomier and Plenty's Inconceivable Circus is pulling in crowds. Let's take a look to see what this says. Pomier and Plenty's Inconceivable Circus is pulling in crowds. Passenger locomotives shuttle guests in. Merchant traders and even the odd high-ranking tackety captain find excuses to dock at Gervais's rest. The ringmaster is run off his feet. The rejuvenated circus is heaving with visitors. Looming over it all is the vast obelisk. Its shadow falls over the crowds. Its sigils are burning brighter than you remember. You can approach the obelisk. The sigils smolder invitingly. You could touch it if you like. I don't know if this is a good idea. But let's try. Perhaps not as tempting. Here once before. The circus has vanished. The islands on which it stood are empty. Empty, aside from a vast tree of fungus stretching up into the heavens. Its high phase stretch from island to island, weaving them together, a verdant. Looming, looming above it is a luminous crustacean, the size of a palace. Okay. A messenger. Its carapace is emblazoned with the sign of two overlapping suns. Its pincers flex slowly, thoughtfully. Sigils burn in the air between the two. Exchange like volleys in a tennis match. Okay, hold on. Its carapace emblazoned with the signs of two overlapping suns. Pincers flex slowly, thoughtfully. Sigils burn in the air between the two, exchange like volleys in a tennis match. Gradually, the flurry of correspondence diminishes. A compact has been reached. The messenger drives the obelisk into the ground, a marker of their concord. The obelisk is marked with the words of the emissaries, of meeting of, meeting of peace. One close to the point ignites in searing light, a commingling of radiances. The obelisk remembers the promise. Something has to. So this is like something that uh, occurred in the past. Moments of memory. This is what happened here. That's where the obelisk came from. That is so cool. Helping the circus. You have brought the circus back to full strength and experienced something of what came before. You've gained one searing enigma. So those are like, the searing enigmas are very rare, I believe, right? And we got one previously. Yeah, I remember someone mentioning that the Searing Enigmas are super rare. And 1,000 experience. That is really cool. What the hell? The messenger. What does that even mean? <laughs> How is our um, terror doing? 27%. What I would like to do now is uh, head to Albion because I want to keep things fresh. But let me take a look here. The crockery for Port Avon. We don't have the windows literature. Let me see what's in the shop here. Bronzewood. Right. So no bargains available. This is where we actually, I think before we bought literature and then sold it right away. So I'm not sure if I'm going to complete these ones. I do want the bronze wood and the nectar for the clock. Let's take a look at the journal. It's been a while, so. Of course, we've got to keep in mind the song of the sky. That's our ambition. The legacy, which uh, the next step is in London. That's where the thing inside of the box wanted us to take it. The spirit. The signalman. London. Okay. That's the uh, the well, which I believe is 
Judging by what some of you were saying in the comment section, maybe this way. We might come back for that later. Okay, so let's keep these open just as a reminder. The chairman, uh, right. Not really interested in helping about all that much. Mr. Menagerie's last voyage, not sure where he's gone next. The princess was Perjurance, which I believe is in Albion. The Regent's Grave, we still haven't done that. Might come back for that. Sweet Jane's Vengeance, we're probably not going to drop off the nameplates. There's the clock. The commission. Okay. 12, 17. I think we're going to, I think we're going to take off. Um, I've got four and four. That should pretty easily get us to Port Prosper. Maybe I should get uh, one more just in case of each. In case we run into something or at least one supply. Now, hold on. Fuel and supplies. Maybe I should see if there's a connection here. Let's go to the west and just see if um, there's some kind of connection here before we head off to Magdalene's the Memorial of the Unknown Rat and then to Port Prosper. I'm excited to get back into this. It's been uh, it's been what like a like a week and a bit since I played, so I'm excited. Okay, checking out the weapons. I want to take a look uh, at the obelisk to see if anything's changed. Wilson's point looks the same. Okay. We're on three fuel. I'm just thinking if I don't find anything, I'm going to have to go back to New Winchester. That shouldn't be an issue. I should also say I really appreciate everyone's patience. I know a lot of you are super excited for me to continue the playthrough. So um, I appreciate your patience with uh, with my little break that I took. I do I do do it sometimes with longer series just to keep keep the game fresh and not overdo it. Uh, I should have used the I should use the bat there. Let's get into some some easier combat just to warm up. See, I'm missing already. Whoa. Excellent. Uh, I could use some repairs, I just noticed. Looks for the captain's cabin. Looks like I don't have uh, a chance for that. Let's get the unusual item. This is, um, if I remember correctly, yeah, it's a slant suit gossip. Oh, and there's something to the south. So we're still at three fuel. Mining, which we don't have. And this is going to be an island. Michelin's Meadow Homestead. Trade them some of your supplies. For Bronzewood. That's probably not a bad idea. I don't want to trade, trade the Bronzewood. Let's trade the supplies for Bronzewood since I don't need the extra supply anyways. Likely. Another mining opportunity up here, it looks like. And it does cut through. That's that's good. That, you know what? That would have been handy to know earlier. I 
I should, uh, oh, nice. Scavenge hull, perfect. I, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explore this little area also. Cause I might as well, I'm here, I've got extra. What is, what is our cash at? 1,000, that's right, 1,821, okay. We're doing fine on cash. Since I'm in this area, I'm not gonna be back for a little bit. This is, this game has such a habit of, of, of doing this to me, I'm just, I have a plan and I just, I find something shiny to look at and I just wanna explore it. Okay, that's gonna be the end of that. Okay, let's go to Magdalene's. I can, um, we can lower our terror completely, I think. And then keep going to the north. I might not even have to stop at the memorial. I'm also kind of curious to see, uh, I noticed that there was an update. I'm curious to see what they've changed or added, if I noticed anything. Okay, we're almost there. There's usually a lot of fighting going on around Magdalene's. Recent steam trails. The clock. The familiar sound, familiar comforting sound of the clock. A small comfort. I talk to patients being discharged. A poet staggers through the doors, clutching a sack of wine. An attendant steadies him while eyeing her colleague meaningfully. A mark is added to a name on a record book. It's a waltz can be heard from the upper floor. Someone has requested the recreation, recreation of the Sapphire Jubilee. Backstage. Share a drink. Unwinding after a guest is a necessity of life at Magdalene's. Backstage relaxed chatter and the scratchy sounds of music over the gramophone fill the air. Clouds of powdered makeup and tobacco wash over you, mixed with lavender perfume. Glasses gleam in mellow candlelight. A party is being prepared. No customers allowed. The scream of a boiling kettle. The attendants are on break. Help an attendant. To rehearse. I can't remember what this does for us aside from getting some more, uh, another story. The attendant finishes applying the brush to her wig. I don't suppose you're familiar with her majesty, majesty personally. No. She quirks an eyebrow in the mirror. Ah, well. I don't suppose tonight's client is either. How amusing. Mother wanders past the young boy. He would only ever listen to his old uh, arithmetic tutor. His death has been rather expensive. Okay, this just looks like the same stuff. Let's go to the, let's treat our terror. We've got so many of these for guilt. Hmm. I don't know, This some of the stuff that we've done lately, I don't really feel that guilty about some of the things we've done lately. Lower your terror. No, nah, I mean, maybe. Wonders of Heaven's no longer steal your heart from beating. But it's going to cost us a vision of heaven. Loneliness. Yeah, I, I feel a bit of loneliness. I've been away for so long. He smiles the practice smile of an old friend, offering comfort for their comrades' predictable misdeeds. That's my specialty. When I'm on duty in the chambers, he begins to hum the tune of a popular ballad of a signaler falling from his locomotive unnoticed by his captain and drifting cold in the dark. This way, do keep up. Run for our past. Let's reconnect with some of our uh, former crewmen that we've lost. We've lost many. Terror fades. Her eyes light up as you enter the room. It looks just like a bunk on your engine. 
She's laid out the tea, just how you liked it. When did you lose her again? Was it an accident? Did you part ways on the Isenberg line? Can't remember. And she's good enough not to mention it. Instead, she talks of former times, of old friends remembered, older jokes shared. It is only hours after that you remember what happened to her. And we're good, we're at 12%. Okay. Let's go to the shops. Uh, the bazaar. The seeds. Let's grab some. Let's grab two of each. I'm not sure what's going to happen when we end up going... Traveling to uh, to Albion, like I, I kind of want to have extra stuff in case um, there's like nothing on the other side. I have no idea what to expect at all. Yeah, like I, I'm totally blind on this. Let's take let's take this route. Actually, maybe we should take this route since that'll give us an opportunity to explore a place that we haven't been able to yet. Unless there's some really nasty weather. That's not a good sign. The chill fills the air. Oh, man. Tankery should be fine. Didn't even get a chance to charge us. Chisel precious stones from its carapace. 61% chance to get supplies. Capture electric tankery cling to the bull's underbelly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should try doing this. We're gonna, we might lose a crew. But it would be cool if we could do that. We tried it last time and failed. Success. Catch. With the aid of your crew, you manage to net the cantankery before it has roused. It struggles, but the net holds long enough for you to wrestle it into uh, into more permanent lodgings. It bangs irritably against the bars of its cage. So we have a caged catch. Is that the first one we've... Is that the first caged catch that we've gotten? Yes. A wild sky beast, exotic, contained, furious. All right, it's paying off already. I can buy supplies and fuel up there, right? Yes. Rock. Oh, wrong way. Whoo. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, he missed. That was close. Miss me again. Oh, that damn, that time he got me. Let's just, let's cool down. It's almost dead. Nice. I'm really glad I got the upgraded weapon. Gain experience, 62% um, chance to get some bronze wood. Let's, uh, let's do that. Failure, shoot. Are we gonna lose crew? Oh, we did get sovereigns. Your guns did their work too well, and the spinster has been reduced to smithereens. I love that word. You managed to scavenge a bunch. It reminds me of um, Dark Souls 3, the um, the Ring City DLC. There's this lady that you encounter when you first start it. It says, it says smithereens in the most pleasant way. You managed to scavenge a bundle of arm length razor edge splinters. Not enough for the train yards, but perhaps enough for replacement chair legs or a handful of snuff boxes for well to do Londoners. 
80 sovereigns isn't bad. I'll take it. Although I did take, what, one hit? Maybe like three damage there. The Gerard. Force open the doors to the hold. 52% chance we could get repairs. Um, I think I'm going to grab repairs. And I'm going to get ready to fight. Nope. No battle this time. There's the storm. Pushing to the north. Not... No, I don't really want to fight against it. I was going to say... Oh, it is pushing us. We could use that to get a little speed, but I'd have to I'd have to kind of push through it to get uh, to get into the main storm. So this is fine. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, these things. I can't scoop them. I'm going to have to go sideways here. Oh, yes. No, no, no! Oh! Holy crap. That was poorly planned out. I was gonna maybe join this fight, but I don't think that's a good idea in this storm. Oh man. The Tackity. I could take out the Tackity to get the nameplate. I don't really want to, though. The factory sounds. It's kind of kind of overpowering, isn't it? Crammed at the feet of a hulking crag, Port Prosper is a little London divided into an affluent west end and an impecunious east. Once again, not a word I say very often. Uh, Queen's Cross is a busy station crowded with engines that have arrived through the nearby transit relay from Albion. Let's, um... Let's talk to the uh, chairman. We might as well turn in our tackety nameplates. One Windward Company's gratitude per nameplate. What is the situation right now? So the Tacketees are at 53. And the soap pipes are at 23. Okay, so it's really it's really edging towards the Tacketees. I don't feel bad doing this. The Parsimonious uh Parsimonious Parsimonious, sorry, chairman has promised coinage for individual nameplates. 25 sovereigns, one windward company gratitude. We're tolerated by them. Okay, 25 sovereigns isn't a lot. Nothing else I can do with him because we need more uh, unlicensed chart, more nameplates. Okay, let's go back to the station. Let's explore Port Prosper. Write a port report, which we forgot to do again. Gotta, gotta write those port reports every time. Take a factory tour. Today, the factories of Port Prosper are open to the public. Okay. The factories of Port Prosper's East End belch out smoke. Inside, hours mined from the Mother Mountains are refined. So that would be... Um, so that would be way over at Lustrum, right? That's the Mother of Mountains, I believe. The workers live in tenement blocks adjoining the smokestacks and are rarely seen in the rest of Port Prosper. Today, the owner of the Windward Refinery is allowing visitors to tour his factory. We can lurk in the shadows, loiter even. 100% chance. This will always increase your eastward reputation. Admire the factory. 92% chance. This will increase your westward reputation. The chimneys belch out sulfur. The workers sound the hammers in time with the striking of a bell. Hours come in unrefined and leave refined. 
So if we get enough, um, if we get enough reputation with the east or the west, then we can speak with the workers for the east and speak with the owners for the west. I believe. So how we have to be embraced by the impoverished east enders. Let's 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 lurk in the shadows. 100% success, of course. From your vantage point in the gloom, you see all sorts of things the other visitors are not privy to. Barrels being assigned to destinations based on bribes rather than need. Fatigued workers revivified by sips of unrefined hours. Several respond poorly and are hauled away to the infirmary. Okay, now it's making a lot more sense. They're really being abused to refine these hours. Only the most youthful and vigorous workers have been assigned to the workstations the tours pass through. They're putting on a face. The rest wait in less, uh, less sightly rooms in the shadows. One aged man catches your eye and winks. You're welcomed by the impoverished East Enders. Cheers go up from Hostis Height, where a team of patriotic mountaineers have scaled the cliff and unveiled the Union Jack. Okay, let's go back. There's nothing else I can do here at the station. Transit to Settlers. No, because we're going to be going to Albion. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt, right? Returning Skyfair is always the center of attention in the East End's pubs. Your tales could inspire uh, listeners to settle at other ports. I'd have to trade in a Sky Story. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about that. Transit Relay. Oh, the Clock Tower. Let's do that. They plan to call it the Albert Clock in memory of the departed Prince Consort. But there's a way to go yet. The roof isn't finished, and the clock neither ticks nor bongs. You can see the fastidious inspector up among the workings with a spanner and a can of oil, showing the workmen how it's done. We can deliver the materials. A cheer from the scaffolding, the foreman beams. An angel bringing gifts. Actually, you point out you'll be needing payment. Yes, I think so. Uh, progress in Port Prosper. You are paid extremely well for the delivery, and the foreman shakes you warmly by the hand. Won't take us no time now, he says with a grin. Maybe we should name the damn clock after you, eh? Yes, you should. So we gained 800 sovereigns, lost our bronze wood, five fortune with the stovepipes. 28 now, struggling. Oh, right. We did. We don't really gain the five fortunes. It's, it's, we kind of, we give the fortunes to the stovepipes, right? So they're at 23 and now they're at 28. It's kind of, it's kind of worded strangely. Is there anything more? So that's it for the clock. Let's go to the uh, shops. Unseasoned hours, no, the Emporium. Let's grab two fuel and three supplies. Five and five, maybe one more supply. We're at five and six, and then we're going to, I can't sell anything, right? 1917, we're gonna head to Albion, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually happening. This is not a dream. After 19 episodes, we're finally moving to the next region. How does this work? A stone edifice scintillant with sigils is encased in a contrivance of steel and brass. This is a Sing Jenkins relay, allowing transport via a loophole in some cosmic mandate across the sunless waste to a far-flung district of heaven. This one leads to Albion, the heart of the new British Empire and the seat of her renewed majesty, Queen Victoria. Bribe the superintendent to give you a travel permit. We actually have a permit. Superintendent is a st uh, stickler for proper procedure. Once you have a permit, you'll be able to travel between Albion and the Reach via the relay. Uh, I'm assuming I don't spend it. But, uh... You need it to. I guess we'll find out. Let's do this. Submit the paperwork required for a travel permit. Opening the way. At a Bronzewood kiosk, the superintendent examines your papers minu minutely. 
sticks them on a spike, then signs and stamps a small book booklet for you. Your new transit permit, Union Jack Blue, he says, of its cover. As if it were something to be proud of. You may now travel between the regions of Albion and the Reach, and I've lost the permits. We can present ourselves to customs. Every relay is on the hunt for contraband. Wait. Travel to Albion first class. First class is reserved for those on Imperial business. You will need appropriate paperwork. Second class. Oh, I see. We need two barrels of unseasoned hours. Ah. So every time we tra we um every time we travel to Albion, we're gonna need these permits. Wait, let me just A pinch face inspector boards the ship with their retinue. Come on, hurry up. If you've nothing to hide, you've nothing to fear. The mouth cracks into something almost but not entirely like a smile. Nothing from me at least. Nothing to declare. Or is this going to let us... Revenue man. I guess we don't have any um, contraband. A clean sweep. The pinch face inspector almost looks disappointed at having given you a clean bill of passage. Passage. Such a waste of time, they mutter, stamping the custom forms. Go on. No reason to take up space here. Continuing your journey. Okay. Your business here is concluded. It's time to continue your adventures in the high wilderness. Uh, I see. I thought that was uh, in preparation to travel out. So we have to remain. I need to get um, some hours or the permits. Bureaucracy, everybody. Jesus. Even in the skies. It's king. Okay. Maybe we can get some uh, permits from the chairman. Further task, no. Transit relay. You can travel first class, you have a ministry stamp permit, or you can bring a couple barrels out. Okay, let's just get some, some hours. We can buy them here, right? There. We're just going to travel second class. As we as we should anyways. And now we're going to go to Albion. <laughs> Jeez. What? Unlocked when reach Albion transit permit is you may not travel between the regions. Do I have to go to the customs? Oh, there we go. Travel to Albion second class. Let's do it. Away. You deliver the barrels to the relay's hour looms, which clank and grind. They spin a jacket of fresh time in which your locomotive will make its journey. Enclosed in your engine's pocket of hours. It is hard to say how long the passage will take. Unseasoned hours tend to be melancholy and anxious. Your journey is likely to be wearing. The machinery grinds and stirs. The steam vents, the sigils of the edifice, burn with sullen fire. A force like a great hand seizes your engine. Lost the hours. We gained five terror. It is not the date that it was. 14th February. Okay. The burrower below is watching you. Oh, damn. Let's go. Onwards.
The king of hours is Albion's son. Built a clockwork replacement. That's really cool. Oh, I'm excited, everybody. Reach transit relay. Oh, look at it. It's totally, like, built up. We're in the upper right. What the hell? Tuxed point. I mean, uh, let's just follow. Follow the border here, I guess. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to expect, but I didn't expect this. It's it feels very open so far. It's kind of like hard edges. I should probably send out the bat. Bounce something down there. Like, I don't know how it's going to be organized. It's going to be ports around. Steam leak. Does that do anything to me? No. Well, let's head to that question mark. At least we've got some graves. Graves as far as you can see. Is that shooting I hear? Very different vibe. It's like dirty and kind of like foreboding. Fighting. It's like a menacing feel to this area. Sounds like fighting to the east. What edifice stood here in times past? None now know. I mean, I just assumed there would be some kind of port close by. Here are London's factories. The wheels of industry churn, making a slow, endless thunder. Whoa. So London's... Maybe London's close by? These are the factories. Friend? A glorious dreadnought. Tintinabulation? Oh, I see. I can I can actually fly over the over this part. Kinda hard to tell. Ryan Inventive Engineering. Please don't smash into me. Point. I don't know where to go. <laughs> it nice to have some kind of indication. Maybe I should have spoken, uh, gone back into the transit relays to see if they could give me like some directions. This is more into like civilization here, so let's stick to this direction. 
didn't find anything. What if I just run it? Oh. Oh. Green light. Albert Wash House. No. What if I just run out of resources? Like. Maybe I should have bought way more supplies. I think I want to go further in to the center. I'm going to send the bat out more often also. Nothing. We'll go around this way. I'm getting a bit nervous. There's a light over here. They're just, uh, just beams of light. We're doing, we're doing okay. Check down here. Come on, find a port. Aha! Perfect. Let's head there. Better have supplies and fuel. Dear God, the Fatalistic Signalman breathes as he takes in the extent of the work world. No kidding. Little nice. A new port captain, your crew crowd to the windows. February 21st, 1906. The bit between Brabazon work world. The officials of uh, Brabazon, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, never bothered to formally name this waypoint. Captains dock here to pick up goods or deliver workers. It's not a place to linger because of the proximity to the accelerated time of the work world. The bit between Brabazon work world, the first work world to be established in Albion. It just seems like a lovely place to live compared to the reach. Recruit the clay conductor. A hulking clay man in a heavy coat stands on the platform. We don't... What do we have? We're, we're, sorry, what are we missing? In terms of our crew? We don't have a quartermaster. This guy's a conductor. Let's just talk to him. A hulking clay man in a heavy coat stands on the platform. The clay... Men were an underclass in old London. Very few of them came to the skies. This one holds an urn to his chest. You're a captain. You can perform funeral rites, he says, nodding to the urn in his arms. Then I want to travel. He pauses for a long moment, and then, as if feeling something more might be expected, I could help out on your engine. Um, oh, he's a first officer. Okay. We're, um, I've decided not to recruit other officers. I'm just going to stick with these ones um, until I complete their quests. Just so that uh, when Luckless eventually retires or dies, we can uh, go through a new set of quests. So, uh, not right now. Although I do understand the benefits of having multiple officers, so you can switch between them for stats and things like that. Um, let's go to the bit between. 
established in Albion. Working here, debtors can escape prison. They remain till their debts are, re are repaid and a ticket away has been funded. The primary industry is that of hours processing, which has a side effect of accelerating time on the work world's surface. The dock between Brabazon work world and Little Nice, where the more privileged overseers reside. Just a little bit of nice. The dock is, for captain's sake, nearer Little Nice than the work world. Unexpected aging would deter even the greediest captain from arriving. We can go to Little Nice. The governor of uh, Brabazon work world resides in the picturesque village at the far end of the bit between. Let's do that first. Thick double doors separate the bit between from Little Nice. The fresh air of this pretty village is in sharp contrast to that near the dock. Little Nice is entirely charming, of course. It is populated with carefully unique houses painted in a curated array of colors. Overseers in striped blazers tend the topiary and maintain the paintwork. Behind a water feature bustling with cherubs is a cottage with an out of place little tower. This is the home of the governor of Brabazon. Converse to the governor. The governor runs Brabazon. In the absence of more direct control from London, he is all powerful here. I can bring gossip to take tea with the governor. I'll let you keep what you can't consume. Okay, so we can trade gossip for tea. It sounds like. I guess we should do that. Have you been to London recently? It struck me just now that I can barely remember the place. He turns to look at the window, at the ridiculous cherubim water feature. I always thought it my home, but obviously it can't be. He erupts loudly. Still, it's nice to know they appreciate my work. I received word that I've been commended by some hall or another in my absence. So we lost the two gossip and we got one caddy of dried tea. We can recline on a bench. Admire the topiary, consider the immaculate lawn, lower our terror a bit. Seems good. A pocket of peace. The grass is immaculately cut. The hedges are trimmed. Stars burn silver. Uh, burn silver above. It is hard to ignore the thunder of the hour looms, spinning their knot of hurrying time over the work world below. We can okay, we can relax here every 15 days. Write a port report. Uh, it says the Brabazon work world is one of several, but it is preeminent among them. As a major industrial center, it is of interest to many. The overseers here work hard to ensure Little Nice remains perfect. Is it Little, is it little Nice or Little Nice? I'm assuming it's Little Nice. Uh, from the freshly painted fence, curly cues, to the newly mown grass of the lawn, it's hard to get a sense of what's going on in Brabazon from your current curated surroundings. The overseers themselves are no use. They must have been briefed. Each gives you clearly sanitized information. You only have to speak to four before you hear repetition. You'll have to go down to the work world itself to learn anything true about Brabazon. You cannot get a report on Brabazon work world from Little Nice. Oh. I see. Return to the bit between and your locomotive. We can recline on a bench, but we've already done that. I guess we're going to go to the work world. The scent of freshly cut grass follows you into the bit between. Before we do that, um, I'd like to go to the shops. We can get fuel here. And crockery. So we can complete this if we wanted to. Report Avon. We can buy caddies of tea. Okay. Well, we don't really need that right now. I guess I should get a fuel. Where am I going to get supplies? I should have bought more supplies. I mean, I didn't know. Okay. Back to the bit between. Join a tour of Brabazon work world. Attempt to converse with an overseer. If you are willing to stop for more conversation, those that do will only linger at the little nice end of the tunnel. It's safer. So we can join with a... It says, join a tour of Brabazon Workworld. The Overseer requires information. No one can be sentenced to the Workworld without the first 
without there first being evidence of a crime. Once you join the tour, you will not be able to leave till the end. Okay, the other option is with the right forms, you can requisition hours. The tour guide can use those to ensure you remain safe. Join a tour. Using hours, I guess. So with the hours, it says, you need a barrel of unseasoned hours to donate to the tour. It will be used to protect you from Brabazon's accelerated time. So if we just go in, we're probably going to, like... I'm wondering how much time is going to pass if we go down there without the time, without the hours. For Starshine, requirements might be waived. The guards are not corruptible. Starshine does not help them perform their daily toil and keep others at theirs. You would most certainly not be allowed to join a tour in exchange for it. Okay. Should I just try? I'm not sure this is a very smart idea. Let's try to uh, converse with an overseer. I'm terribly sorry. I don't have permission to speak with you. The overseer is supervising a small group of workers loading crates onto a locomotive docked alongside your own. They're working slowly. He seems disinclined to rush them. Two sky stories. Okay, so we can get that every 15 days. Not bad. Little niece. Let's... Uh, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't think it's very smart. Especially since there's an option to do it with hours. Okay, what are we what are we looking like here? I can get fuel here, I can't get supplies. Shoot. Maybe I should have gone over here. I think I'm gonna head this way. I'm gonna skip this for now. Just I'm gonna wait till I can get like some hours or something. Okay. The nursery. I'm, I'm gonna hang on to my supplies. I mean, I'm not, I can't send the bat out anymore unless it's like, unless we get super desperate. Like if we're down to our last one. Oh, there's a spot over here. Maybe I should go this way. There's 312. I'm going to go straight until I hit something. Oh. What is this? A pitiful scattering of plain abandoned coffins. Bully's Acre. Humble wooden coffins pepper the sky here. This is a Bully's Acre, a pauper's graveyard. There is little room for the dead in London. They just shoot them out. Pay respects to reduce terror, 98% chance. Break open a coffin. Quietly mine some of your crew have superstitious, superstitions about the dead. 100% 100% chance. Uh, investigate a mysterious gleaming. Some of the coffins sparkle under a shroud of glass dust. And what's that amongst them? Something larger, winking with starlight. Maybe it'll get us some supplies? Probably not, though. It's probably going to get us some kind of treasure. We're doing fine on terror, so let's do this. I know, I know, I feel, I feel dirty doing it, but... Her Majesty's Man in Death. 
You take your least scrupulous signaler out onto the footplate. You bring no lanterns, relying on your sight and distant sunlight that scintillates off a few broken fragments of glass nearby. Soon enough, a promising coffin of pleasing bulk passes by, close enough to touch. Deft work with the coal shovel brings it aboard. You break it open in your cabin, inside, the waxen face of a newly dead auditor, who bothers to bury an auditor in state. Within his stiffening fingers, the favored poetry of the Empress. Ministry approved literature. Okay. Hmm. I kind of want to go deeper. Let's go to the center. Pretty good chance there's going to be something right in the middle, right? Can we go through here? Ah, see houses. This is a good sign. Maybe London's going to be right there in the middle. I'm going to send out the bat. There it is. There it is. The excited shriek of train whistles, the hiss of steam, the clamor of countless voices. It's London. We've arrived. 625 experience gained. The Clockwise Kingdom. My second achievement after all this time. Fuck. St. Dominic Station. An approach from a gloomy middleman. No sooner have you pulled into the sidings than a long-faced man in a, in a battered coat approaches your locomotive and asks for a moment of your time. The story was unlocked because you have veils of 40 or more. Very cool. Okay, now we're talking. Hear what he has to say. He fiddles with the bent brim of his hat as you approach. His face as solemn as a basset hound. Let's hear him out. An offer of work. His voice is nasal, his eyes gray. I will not wish you a good day. You are a person of intelligence, and the day is manifestly miserable. I myself am newly afflicted by the gout, which has made my mornings a parade of wretchedness. No doubt you have your own misfortunes, into which I will not pry. Instead, let us move to the happier subject of business. You have come to my attention for the very reasons you avoid others, your subtlety and your cunning. My employer may have work for you, profitable work, but perilous and profoundly illegal. I'm interested. Should you be interested, seek me at the Admiral Benbow Inn here in London. With that, he takes his leave, tutting at the thickness of the fog before he dons his crooked hat and vanishes into the crowd. Wit and vinegar, a smuggler's tale. Speak to the gloomy middleman at the Admiral Benbow Inn in London to learn more about smuggling. Yes, this is exactly what Captain Luckless wants to do. He's definitely a smuggler. Your aunt is here. <laughs> St. Dominic Station, London's chief station, draped in Union Jacks and studded with bronze busts of her enduring majesty. The platform crowd, the platform's crowd with people. If the throne of ours is London's heart, this is its uh, a carotid artery. <laughs> of course. So our aunt is here. We can explore London. We can go to the house without windows. That's the address. The Silken Salon, Hiron Crew, Office of Works. So let's check out the shops. We've got the bank here, nice. The yards, augmentations, the assaying device, I want that. More weapons, the tier three weapons as well. Tier three um, upgrades, awesome. How much is that? 1,000. We can actually afford some of this stuff right now. Um, the bazaar. Glass to World of Berry. Literature for the Clockwork Sun. West North. Okay, so it is going to give us directions. Excellent. I feel so much better now. Um, and then I can get fuel and supplies. Perfect. Steam and Sapphire Yard. Ministry of Public Decency. I want. I kind of want to talk. I want to talk to our aunt before we wrap this up. She, she doesn't look very happy with us. Dear God. Dear God. Somehow she has found her way to the high wilderness. She is trying to get your attention with the frantic waving of her horrible hat. She could put a hat on that hair. 
I know you've seen me. Listen, I've quite exhausted my possibilities here. I'm a serviceable quartermaster. I have friends everywhere, and my scones are to die for. How's that for a curriculum vitae? Now, let me aboard. Is she even your real aunt? Either way, you'll have to deal with her. Okay, we don't have a quartermaster yet, so I guess we're going to bring her on. Employer aunt is your quartermaster. <laughs> is she even your real aunt? Okay, yeah. Uh... Options require sign-on fee. Uh, filial piety demands as much. And she does not make... And she does make a damn fine scone. Why do they have damn... Can you guys explain this? Is this, like, something I'm going to find out later? Why do they... Why do they bleep out damn? Uh, this will get you a quartermaster who will increase your iron by six and your mirrors by two. What are our stats at right now? We do need irons and mirrors. That's what we're weakest in, so that, that helps. Savage secret. Let's employ our aunt as our quartermaster. She smiles with a sincere delight. Here, take my bag. Her bag is very heavy. And my hat. Her hat is also very heavy. Your crew are alarmed when she boards your engine. Their alarm only increases when she begins to pass Comet. After a thorough survey of your locomotive, she graces you with a smile. There is work to be done. She's extracted gossip from you before she even she's even boarded. This woman is skilled. Learning about an inconvenient aunt. She's aboard. Recruited her and inconvenient aunt. I love it. And we lost the savage secret. Okay, everybody, I'm going to wrap up this episode here, the 20th episode of what's going to continue to be a long series. But uh, I, I love the story. I love the writing. And we're going to continue and hopefully complete it. I mean, I'd like to complete at least uh, this. Um, at least like L Captain Luckless's uh, playthrough, hopefully complete his main objective, if not continue playing afterwards. Um, We'll see, we'll see if I continue loving this game or not. Um, I know I, I just by reading some of the comments, some of you have started playing and kind of given up after a bit because it maybe becomes a little bit samey. But what's kind of cool is that each port tends to have a different kind of mechanic to it. And just the stories are really interesting to, to read. Um, the combats, I think if there's one thing I would like to see them improve a bit is the combat, but we'll have to see how it is here. Maybe there's going to be some different things to it. Um, the combat does tend to feel get a bit, little bit repetitive and it does take a while to kind of like travel across the regions. But at the same time, that that time that it takes for you to travel allows you like the opportunity to think about what you've experienced so far. So I, I kind of like the pacing to a certain degree. But um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, and uh, that'll be it for now. Thank you so much for watching. This is Captain Luckless signing off. I'll see you on the next one. And I love you all.